Hello, greetings, and welcome to Christianity and Pop Culture, the show where we talk about stuff, things, and more silly nouns, describing objects, and pick apart the Christian symbolism within them. I'm Jason Hennig, your co-host, maybe, for this show, and probably your host for today. Let's dig in. Today, we're talking about a very obscure game made by an indie company, Upstarts. Pretty shocking success story. It's uh, called uh, Overwatch. You've um, probably never heard of it. This is the most ridiculous script. No, no. Ah. Sorry, I was having a disagreement with our editor over the definition of too much irony. If you didn't catch it because you weren't paying attention or don't play video games, Overwatch is an enormously popular game published by media giant Blizzard Entertainment. It takes a fun twist on first-person shooters hearkening back to Team Fortress. Just like everything else, Christian imagery has seeped in in subtle and not-so-subtle ways to Overwatch. I just wanted to point out our masterpiece of art here. Masterpiece. We had Picasso do it for us. That's why it's not to proportion, because it's Picasso. Not because, not because we're bad, because it's Picasso. Get it? Before we truly examine the Christian images here, I want to just issue a warning. I was told the last Christianity and pop culture that I hosted didn't include enough memes. So allow me to dramatically overcompensate. After all, this is the internet. <laughs> Speaking of memes, let's get to our first topic. I don't even mean mercy, mercy. I mean mercy is a name. Like, look, I'm just going to show you a picture. See? What do you want me to say? She's got angel wings, a halo, doesn't really deal damage, is a healer. Like, I don't mean to just pick low-hanging fruit, but come on, this is child's play. Even past that, she resurrects people, like the thing Jesus did. There is no world where this is even arguably not Judeo-Christian imagery. But that's an easy one. Let's find some tougher stuff. Alright, so mercy may have been easy and straightforward, but we're not here for easy and straightforward. You could have told me that mercy was Christian imagery, but let's talk about Reaper. Reaper, fairly obviously, is named after the iconic Grim Reaper. Did you know the Grim Reaper appears in the Bible? Well, kind of. The four horsemen of the apocalypse come from the Bible. The white horse, black horse, red horse, and death. One of these things is not like the others. Yeah, I know. Sort of comes out of left field, huh? But that's because that's the only horseman explicitly named. The horsemen of pestilence, war, and famine are interpreted, not stated. Only their horses' colors are given. In any case, the Horseman of Death is actually an early icon that later became synonymous with the Grim Reaper during the years after the Black Plague swept Europe. The image of a specter in black with a skull face, scythe, and hourglass dates to that period, and is a mixture of the Horseman of Death and the Angel of Death found in the Old Testament. Now, Reaper doesn't have a scythe or an hourglass, but he does take the form of a black-clad spook with a skull face. This imagery is, in fact, reminiscent of not only the Grim Reaper as a cultural icon stemming from a religious idea, but is even how the Horseman of Death is described in the Biblical Book of Revelations. Drop a knowledge like bombs in here. Okay, back to Mercy. I promise I'm not just going to re-say everything twice. But Mercy's resurrection is worth noting again. That said, I think it's time to play the sad montage of all the poor people who were resurrected only to instantly die.
All right, with that out of the way, let's break it down. Mercy's resurrection ability is a normal ability, not her ultimate, which means she can use it relatively frequently. So you get a lot of good uses, but also a lot of bad ones. That said, Mercy's ability to resurrect people as an angel is coincidentally a big part of the Bible. Other than the obvious one where Jesus came back after being dead for three days, he performed a number of resurrections. Probably most famously, he resurrected Lazarus, one of his friends, after he was dead for like three and a half days. You'll notice the three-day motif. That's because people of the day believed after three days the soul was truly gone out of the body. They were considered impossible resurrections. Other than these two resurrections, there are seven additional accounts of someone being raised from the dead in the Bible, three in the Old Testament, and four, along with the two I mentioned, in the New. Alright, alright, so... So, the next one is going to be about Reaper again. Um, he's a knight. No, I'm not, I told you I wasn't going to re re-say everything. No, I'm, we're not re-saying everything. That's a joke. Hear me out, hear me out, though. <laughs> hear me out. This isn't as bonkers as it sounds. Reinhardt is a knight. <laughs> like, look at the guy. His image was based on a medieval knight. Doesn't really matter from where. They all had similar codes of what we call in English history, chivalry. That included faith in God, protection for the weak and innocent, and also honorableness in combat. So if someone tells you chivalry is dead, go ahead and revitalize it by challenging them to a duel to the death. No, don't, don't, don't actually do that, please. Reinhardt enacts a lot of these virtues in Overwatch, though it's not necessarily clear what his opinions are of faith. His protective abilities and his motivational attitude all fit in with that chivalrous valiance we would expect. That being said, he is modeled off of a plethora of knights in European history who were pinnacles of faith. St. George, the knight who reportedly slew a dragon, is just one famous example. So those were the Christian elements of Overwatch. Maybe there's more, maybe we stretched some. I'm the writer for this video, so I get to pick. What do you want to see next? Leave a comment and let us know. Then get out of here. You have things to do. But that's because the only horseman... No. That's, that's the only horseman explicit. Fire me.